years ago, a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before. Kitchen Stadium, a giant cooking arena. The motivation for spending this fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. On a cheesy! To realize his dream, he secretly started choosing the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Masaharu Morimoto. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from around the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day, using all their senses, skills, creativity. They're to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a Challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. Every battle, reputations are on the line in Kitchen Stadium, where master chefs pit their artistic creations against each other. What inspiration does today's challenger bring? And how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! If memory serves me right, it was Senno Rikyu who established the tea ceremony culture with his creativity. We have heard there is a man just like him creating new trends in tradition-bound Kyoto-style cuisine. It was he who stimulated former Iron Chef Michiba by serving him Japanese food using foie gras. I just thought uh, foie gras could be nice in a Japanese marinated dish or all about as a dressing. I try to mix these ideas with traditional techniques so that I can create new and interesting recipes. I simply had to see him recreate this in my kitchen stadium. Today's challenger, the man who upholds Senorikyu's philosophy, trendsetter in Kyoto cuisine, from Kosen in Minamiyazabu, owner and chef Toshia Senba. He joined the top restaurant in Kyoto at age 16, where he acquired all the basic techniques. At 26, he came to Tokyo and served at a restaurant in Akasaka, unleashing his originality and skill. And at 33, he opened his own restaurant, where he serves innovative recipes based on Kyoto cuisine. He has kept opening restaurants of various styles, further broadening his horizons. His recipes are considered revolutionary in Kyoto cuisine. He upholds the essence of ingredients in his dishes. So now, Senba, show us up to the minute Kyoto cuisine here in the kitchen stadium. I'll try to show my originality and just uh, hope to win. に縛られた京料理の世界に新風を吹き込む骨のある男がやってまいりました。まさに千の利休の流れを含む京料理の記載。
さあ皆さん大きな拍手でお迎えください南麻布高専主人千葉トシヤ In the tradition bound, tightly wound world of Kyoto style cuisine, Senbo, one of the few trying to smash the shell of convention. He introduced former Iron Chef Michiba to the use of foie gras in Japanese cuisine. That was 10 years ago. He's come a long way since, and he'll definitely provide a breakthrough or two today. Yeah, oh, that was、uh, ten years ago. He was one of my guests. So this. Yes. Hey, 今日もその新しい発想で素晴らしい料理を作ってください。I'll try. Thank you. それでは発想では負けないうちの鉄人たちを登場させましょう。よりやるいアイアンシェフ。And Iron Chef Japanese Masaharu Morimoto. These three bring the fresh breeze of invention to Kitchen Stadium. So, we're going to go. Dare to Tatakai no Scop. Sakai san, accept my challenge. All right, Senba goes for Sakai, guaranteeing a high quotient of creativity today. Hiroyuki Sakai, the delacroix of French cuisine. His artistic sense, use of color, and one of the first to fuse Japanese techniques with French cooking. Today, facing a Japanese chef who looks to Western cuisine for fresh ideas. These men from opposite sides, but working with similar philosophies. Kyo ryori to French. 今回はその両方で味わってみたいあの海のミルクと呼ばれる貝を用意しましたしかも今日は北海道サロマ湖から取り寄せた非常に珍しいものですそれでは発表します今日のテーマはこれです Asura oysters. If memory serves me right, they grow in the waters of Lake Saloma in Hokkaido, which is blocked by ice flows during the winter, creating a mix of fresh and salt water. Thus, the oysters have a unique flavor. The name comes from its shape, which looks like the faces of an Asura statue. It is splendid in texture and strong in sweetness. So now, you two chefs, take these rare and exquisite oysters and create sublime oyster dishes for me. Today's challenger, Senba, a Japanese chef who's not afraid to show his creativity, going against Iron Chef French Sakai theme ingredient oysters from Hokkaido waters, fresh as can be. Each man uses techniques from the other's repertoire. It ought to be interesting, so without any further ado, we're ready to rumble. On it, Kizin! And the opening gong banged, and Senba fired up at the outset, but the veteran Iron Chef Sakai is the first one up to the ingredient stand. Sakai grabbing oysters off that massive pile of them. A creative Kyoto style Japanese versus French cuisine oyster battle on tap and dock. Yeah. Asura oysters they are from Hokkaido. Right, and you can notice there are three or four of them are kind of glumped together there. Okay, we can see that. And the oysters, they're from Lake Saloma, where the fresh water and the salt water they mix. Okay. And so they kind of smell less fishy right from the start. All right, and Sakai has already hustled back to his side of the station. Good news, less fishy smell. And now already Senba's got several oysters in shell tossed into that pot. Each man's got about、mm, 20 to 30, I'd say. And now what's this? Is that, is that sake? That's what it looks like, yeah. Fukusan? Yes. yes, Japanese sake over oysters. Thank you, Ota. And generous with it, too. And before we get much further, let's meet our guests for today's oyster battle. First, we'd like to welcome singer Masahiko Kondo. So good to have you here today, young man. Hi, nice to be here. Now about oysters. Yes. I hear you're crazy about them. Oh, I really love oysters. I just eat them until I collapse. What's the most you've eaten at one time? I think about 60. No way. I kid you not. You know the small American oysters? I had 60. Unbelievable. I couldn't sleep last night. Okay, well, enjoy today. Thanks. And we've got actress Lisa Juna. Nice to have you too. Pleasure to be here. Juna san, you're in a hit musical show right now, I understand. Yes. And stamina's got to be pretty important for you these days. 
Oh, that's right. And oysters? I love them. Now, do you know Asuda oysters? No, I just heard about them. Just now? Mm, yeah. They seem to be smaller, so you can really have a lot of them. Oh, uh, well, I'll try to eat as many as I can. <laughs> All right, good for you. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. And commentator Dr. Yukio Hattori. Always a pleasure. Doc, they do look a little smaller in size. That's right, but actually the meat inside is not that small. What? From the outside, it looks quite small, Okay, but it's not really all that, uh, that bad. Floor reporter Ota, go ahead. Yes, I talked with Iron Chef Sakai about the oysters who mentioned that they are quite small, but they look very tasty. He says, unfortunately, because of their size, I'm not sure how many dishes I'll be able to create today. Okay, Sakai's never slipped in a fish battle. He's won every one he's been in, and with shellfish, clams, scallops, abalone, others, he's 5-0 and and gunning for his sixth straight win today in the shellfish category. So, uh, nothing fishy about that record. Kuzan? <laughs> Go ahead, Ota. Challenger Semba also says that today's oysters are a little small, but they have a really profound taste. They're excellent, he says. All right, Senba, owner and chef of Kosen in Tokyo, and Kondo-san, you frequent his place. Yes, yes. He serves dishes using ingredients of the season. It's very nice. Okay. And I try to go there early in the season to enjoy it as soon as I can. All right, so you're pretty much on top of it as far as what he serves at his place. Yeah, and he's really good at uh, intricate preparation as well. Hmm. The presentation and the taste are amazing. Great. And now, you had foie gras at his place? No, I haven't. No. But I'd like to. Okay, well, Doc Senba's the man who opened former Iron Chef Michiba's eyes to the potential of foie gras in Japanese cuisine. Mm -hmm. And Michiba says he got a few ideas from him that he turned into dishes here at Kitchen Stadium. Right, well, in Japanese cuisine, we use the liver of anglerfish, right? smoked, marinated, mm -hmm. wind, soy, and citrus vinegar. If you remember, Michiba made a dish similar to that, only using foie gras. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. It was great, too. Yeah, and that's probably the dish that he got the idea. A from. real eye-opener. Yeah, and his place, the Challenger, actually still has lots of dishes on the menu with foie gras. And Junasan, what's your favorite oyster recipe? Pea. Uh, fried oysters. Fried oysters? <laughs> yeah. I knew you were going to say that. How, how about raw? Well, raw, yeah, yeah. I like them too. All right, we'll see if you get some served that way. Go ahead, Ota. I'm told that the challenger has some rice flour known as Domyoji rice flour in his steamer. What about that, Doc? Well, I think what he'll do is he'll use the rice flour for batter or coating mm -hmm. and then use that in the in the steaming. So he'll be steaming that later. All right, now up in the royal box, here's challenger Senba's wife, Sawoko, the missus looking on. Not too relaxed. And also up on that side of the royal box are several of Senba's apprentices. You know, he does have two other restaurants in addition to Kosen. Fine young men here have turned out. And now, Kondo-san, what's your favorite oyster recipe? Well, basically, I like them raw best. That's the best. You open it up and mm -hmm. go for it raw with a little bit of lemon. In America, I've had it with chili sauce. Oh, yeah, that's popular. Yeah, it's, it's like hot ketchup sauce, uh, tomato ketchup. Mm -hmm. And they also put them on top of crackers. It's good. Right, yeah. Also with horseradish as well. Yeah, I like them like that too. All right, well, what a rarity. Producers found a guest perfectly suited for the battle today. <laughs> Kuzan, take it. Into one of these pots, the Iron Chef has added olive oil, garlic, shallots, maitake mushrooms, squid ink, red chili, and squid legs. All right, right there, squid ink, concentrate, but no oysters yet. Okay, and 15 minutes gone. So this will be a sauce. Mm. And meanwhile, the Challenger's strenuous activity on and their side. Go. Yeah, Challenger Simba says about Kyoto-style cuisine that there used to be a lot more creativity in the old days. These days, chefs just stick to the stuffy old rules. I praise those who try to explore new ground. I myself am trying to combine Western ingredients to free Kyoto-style cuisine from the rut that has been in. All right, well, Senno Rikyu, the founder of the Japanese tea ceremony, he had a great influence on Kyoto-style cuisine, introducing many different ingredients. One of his sayings went something like, uh, to meet the objective, you've got to be ready to throw off the yoke of tradition. That was the basic gist of it. So in that sense, this man, Senba, sort of jibes to the same wavelength. Kuzan, go. The challenger is grinding some ingredients into a paste in an earthenware mortar. The ingredients include pike, eel, yam, potatoes, and oysters all mixed together and strained. Well, it's a real pulverizing effort there, Doc. What do you suppose we're looking at? I have absolutely no idea. Okay. <laughs> well, let's move on. Kondo-san, what oyster dishes have you had at Kosen? Well, I don't think I've had oysters at his place. Really? This will be the first time? Yeah. So no oysters previously from Senba, but today you'll have all the oyster dishes from him. Now, still on the challenger side, there's the food Kuzan. processor. What do you have? He has a couple of things here. Foie gras uh -huh. and salt cured plums. Oh, foie a blend. Gras. Yes, foie gras and umeboshi plums here. Well, speak of the devil. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, so no oyster dishes previously from Senba, but today you'll have all oyster dishes from him. Still on the challenger side. Go ahead, Ocha. He has a couple of things here. Foie gras oh. and salt cured plums. Foie gras. A blend. Okay. Yes, foie gras and umeboshi plums here. Speak of the devil. Well, foie gras in Japanese cuisine. Now, former Iron Chef Michiba, Japanese chef, pretty conventional, pretty much played it by the book. Even he went with foie gras in Japanese dishes after discovering Senba's cooking. Right. Kukusan, yes. Do squid ink and oysters really go well together? The Iron Chef says they match perfectly, the body of the squid ink and the milky taste of the oysters. Then he laughed and said, but Japanese cuisine chefs wouldn't dream of doing such a thing. Ha, 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 ha. This will definitely be a sauce. <laughs> All right, right there and some fresh cream. And Kukusan, go. Yes, he did add fresh cream to the oysters in this container, but before doing so, these oysters had been lightly boiled in a mix of shallots, butter, white wine, and oyster juices. He then added the fresh cream to them as you saw a moment ago. All right, Ota, stay on top of it. Now, the challenger is making some meatballs, or actually more okay. like cakes. In oyster meatballs. My, they look good, too. And this will be a first for me if they do have oyster meat in them. Challenge Senba. Kusan. Yes. Yeah, let me remind you of the ingredients that made up these dumplings, or these meatballs. Ground pike eel, yam potatoes, minced oysters, and he also added akazake. Directly translated means red sake. I asked him why he used akazake, hmm. and he told me to add a mild sweetness to it. Akazake. Yes, uh-huh. Okay, and there it is, akazake. Yeah, it's a sweet cooking sake. It uses red malt in the brewing process. Thank you, sir. And also in the paste is pike eel, a very popular choice for the cuisine of Kyoto. Great, you Kusan. are. Go. Yeah, over here on the Iron Chef side, he has a container which is filled with fruit, papayas, mangoes, and a splash of lemon juice. This fruit hmm. covers the oysters that we saw wow. a moment ago that were lightly boiled in shallots, butter, white wine, and oyster juices. To some of those, he added the fresh cream that we saw, but he also left some of them as is. Both kinds are now smothered in papayas, mangoes, and lemon juice. Well, Kondo-san, how about that? Papayas and mangoes and oysters. Mm, you can't get something like this in Japanese cuisine, so I really look forward to this one. Well, you ever had anything even close to this? Oh, uh, no, never. No. <laughs> Welcome to the show. First time. Okay, he's thinly slicing some scallops now. Also for this one. What's this going to be? Well, he's putting them on top. Hmm. So how will he cook this one? Don't think he will, actually. Hmm. Just marinate it. No other idea. Yeah, I agree with Doc. They'll be great just as they are. You heat them from this point, they'll just ruin them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you think Sakai will make a sauce for them, Doc? Uh, I would think so, yeah. I can't be 100% sure. But right. Go ahead. Challenger Semba says Iron Chef Sakai's use of papaya with oysters will probably match okay, but he's really pushing the limit. It's only forgivable because it ain't. Japanese cuisine. Well, <laughs> seems a wee bit agitated. He doesn't look like that type. <laughs> well, maybe the owner just made that whole thing up. Who knows? <laughs> All right, now here it is. This. Oh, okay, this is the rice flour, domyoji. Which, which is steaming. Take it. Yes, that's exactly right. This is the mix of domyoji rice flour and steamed and grated turnips from Kyoto. Wow, steamed turnips mixed in. Oh, okay. Grated turnips that were steamed first. Okay, we got it. So I think he's preparing to steam some oysters here then. And this to coat the oysters? That's yeah, the you idea? Yeah, stuff the oyster meat into a thick batter first. All right. And now there, the oysters coming into view. Yeah, so I think he'll be doing more to this, no? I, 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 think would, he'll, I think he'll probably be steaming this eventually. I would hope so, yes, doing something to it. I guess. All right, 30 minutes gone, entering the second half of the battle. Now, with this, if you try to pour the soup before it hardens, this will just fall apart on you. Kusan? Yes. The Iron Chef has prepared another batch of oysters, which are in a container sitting over on the stovetop. These oysters have been boiled in white wine, olive oil, oyster sauce, pepper, and long onions. Okay, we see that right there. And he tells me that the reason why he's using oyster sauce is because, as the name suggests, oyster sauce is full of oyster Oyster essence. Mm -hmm. Oyster on oysters, you can't beat that flavor combination. Back to you. Hey, I like it. Oyster on oyster. Double dose straight ahead. <laughs> coming at you. Now, speaking of that item over there, uh -huh. the, the milky one, you can see okay, it's at the right. top. Yeah. Get I close think we'll up. be frying these eventually. These right here. Yeah, at the very end, probably fried oysters. All right. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't get too excited. I'm, I'm just guessing so far. I'm just going by elimination. That's the only item here okay, you could possibly with fry. with a batter and breadcrumbs? Yeah, I would think so, yeah. All right, now the pan in front. The one nearer to us? Yes. Um, going to have to watch a little bit more to figure that one well, out. Well, Kondo-san, you're the oyster expert, it seems. What's your guess? Mm, could be just grilling them. 
Ooh, grilled. Mm. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, with oyster sauce and long onions, that could just be it. Now back on Senba's Ooh. side. Okay, now the Challenger's still working on... Right, he had thing. these at the beginning. Okay, now I could have been wrong here. You might use just the broth. There. Without using the oysters themselves. Right, exactly. Okay. Chris Cuisan. Yes. I just happened to ask the Challenger about that very same thing, and he said, I made this like a soft-shell turtle-style soup. I do this a lot at my restaurant using various ways and means. Okay. It's really good. You've had his turtle yeah. broth. Yeah, Okay, so a variation of that being created here today. Now, the Iron Chef is just using them as is. Is. Bold approach right there. Yeah. Now, what were the other items? Uh, just wakame and salt. I Chris, on. Take it. This is wakame seaweed, uh, salt, oysters in the shell, and that's it. That's it. That's it. Soft seaweed, salt, and oysters. Minimal right there. So he'll be opening these up just before serving, like for each Okay, taster. a straight shot of oysters, some seaweed and salt, nothing else. Right. Chris, on. Go. I told Iron Chef Sakai that Junasan loves fried oysters, and he said, no kidding. All right. Thanks for the tip. Leave it to me. I've got it covered. He was all smiles after hearing that. Oh, great. <laughs> he enjoys pleasing the ladies. I'm happy. <laughs> and now the challenger is What's he making got? noodles out of the oysters, isn't he? Hmm. Did you see that squeezing device there? Right by the bowl? Yeah, yeah, How do you is. work that? It's like a pump. Okay. And the ingredients he's mixing, what, he'll put that through the device? I imagine so. Did anybody catch what's in that? Well, the uh, blend of oysters, there's flour and cornstarch. Oh, okay. Right, now I remember. So, now going in. Maybe oyster, oyster noodles. noodles. Yes, that's a possibility. Don't be too sure. <laughs> Maybe not. No, no, no. Oyster yeah, noodles, that, that sounds okay. okay. Yeah. Chris, on. Go. Yeah, just to confirm what the Challenger has in this tube, like you said, blended oysters, cornstarch, flour, salt, and broth. All right, broth as well. Oh, I thought so. I see soup. Oh, okay. Mm. So what do you know? Oyster noodles in soup. Hi. That's on the way. All right. Uh -huh. Looks interesting. Basuda Hi. oyster Hi. noodles. Check this out, how he does this. Pretty slick right there. Well, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. There you there you have it. Oyster noodles caught in the act. Oh. Well, what do you know? Oyster noodles in Hi. soup. Oh, boy. Asura oyster noodles. Check this out. How he does it. Pretty slick right there. Oh, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. There it is. Oyster noodles caught in the act. Okay, now if we can check out the Iron Chef. Okay. I saw some pasta there I think he's going to use. All right. He's got to have something to go with that squid ink sauce. Where did that go? Yeah, that's the only sauce. Well, we can think of, yeah. yeah. Uh, how is he going to combine the oysters? Well, that's the question. All right. Now over here, the action's picked up. A oyster or two added to this one. Yeah, he did add some oysters. And they're getting chopped up. As they're being stir-fried. Take it. If you're talking about this dish on the Iron Chef's side, this is a mixture of eggs, milk, bouillon, and fresh cream, all prepared in a frying pan with butter, just like scrambled eggs. Hmm. Now, where in the heck is he going with this one? Uh, again, I absolutely no idea what he's doing. I'm just going to dodge that okay. question. Let's move over to the challenger <laughs> side, uh, where he's working on his oyster noodles. Out and that? into the bowl, so it appears his intention is to put them into a soup. Yeah. A little tight with the noodles, though. But they were handmade, and if you're wondering, that will clear the theme ingredient requirement. They are, they contain oysters in them noodles. Right. Now, if we can go back to the Iron Chef side. Fried oysters. Fried there oysters. you go. Fried oysters. <laughs> From the Iron <laughs> Chef, a deep fried job in progress. Yeah, we were right. He's frying the item. Those are the ones with the milk. Go. Yeah, let me update you on what he's done to these oysters so far. First, he boiled them in shallots, butter, and white wine, then dipped them in fresh cream, fried them lightly, took them out, and coated them with wheat flour, olive hmm. oil, and curry powder, and is now deep frying them. All right, not just fried. They're getting fried twice. So we're 100% sure they are fried oysters. Oysters for the lady, made by Iron Chef French Sakai. <laughs> and we know he's going after your vote, Junasan, and it's a perfectly legit. <laughs> Fine attempt. Cuisine? Yes. Yeah, I told the challenger that the Iron Chef is preparing special fried oysters for Junasan, and he replied, Hey, I'm aiming at longtime patron and friend Kondo-san. I have a stew, a really good one, using oyster soup that I know he's going to love because I made it to suit his taste. A stew. Oh. That's right. Uh, no, I always eat stew when I go there. Okay, tit for tat. So his broth is soft-shell turtle, right? And remember the oysters boiled in the Japanese sake? Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. So with soy sauce, I think that's going to be the main ingredient. All right, now what's here? Oh, it's foie gras. Okay. That, you missed that? Okay, we, that, we that's right, that's right. Before. Foie gras with an umeboshi sauce <laughs> so all plum. over it, over spill. And he's used a bowl with a design of a plum here, if you notice. Okay, now here. Yeah, the Iron Chef has finished this one. The scrambled eggs. 
Ooh. moisture on and the top, yeah. Caviar and caviar, right? The trifecta. What Pretty a design! Impressive. Yeah, no doubt. A wonderful about that. presentation by the Delacroix. And the items at the bottom are lentils. I hope. Okay, a soup or puree. So he's creating three layers Make it of four, flavor. Four, there four, you think? Yeah. Go ahead. As Hot Torisan just said, he's exactly right. In each bowl, the scrambled egg mixture containing oysters is surrounded by a sea of lentil soup. On top of which, he's placed a layer of boiled oysters, capped off with a big spoonful of caviar. Okay, so now we just want to find out what's going going on this one over yeah, here. Yeah, this is the squid there ink. You go. Yeah, now what goes on here, that uh, makes or breaks my career. Okay, <laughs> hey, Doc, Doc, you bet your career on the show all the time. <laughs> How about a little tradable currency for a change? <laughs> hey, I resemble that remark. And now on the challenger side, some mochi. Ten minutes to go. Ten minutes left. Now I think oh. these are for the stew, you see? Okay, okay. this is hari hari. No. Oh, yeah. Now, this vegetable is from Kyoto, this, this type. Okay. And so using this, the stew will be called Hari Hari Stew. Hari Hari Stew, just for Kondo-san. You're young man, you're getting some special treatment today. Oh, and this stew is really good. It was actually more common to right. do this with whale meat in the old days. Hmm. But as you see some blocks here, these are minced or blended oyster meat. Okay, and those oyster balls, too. Ooh, this is going to be great. Yeah, it looks wonderful, doesn't it? Fukuzan? Yes. The Iron Chef is now ladling another sauce onto some plates over here. This is oyster soup, shallots, fresh cream, and wasabi. Why wasabi? He says, because I thought the milky taste of the oysters in this dish would be a little better with a zine to it. Okay. Without it, the tasters might get a little tired of it. It's a French sauce using wasabi, and it should be good. All right, I like it. Wasabi. Should. Should and hope. Sounds like an engineer talking Taking here. a page <laughs> from Japanese cuisine right there. All right, now the challenger has a steam dish with, what is that, turnip? Uh -huh. hmm. Okay, and he's added uh, the soup there, I think. And here a typical Kyoto-style presentation. Go! The ingredients that the challenger has combined to create the sauce that you see here include oyster broth, salt, white soy sauce, and kudu starch. Ooh, I tell you, appetite's beginning to get wetted, everyone. Uh -huh. I mean, ready to dive in. And there. Fukuzan, yes. you remember the foie gras with the salt-cured plum sauce on it? Mm -hmm. When I asked him about that, he explained that the pink represents plum blossoms and the green represents presents a bird called uguisu, or bush warbler, a sign of spring in Japan. Oh, I see, okay. Bird on a plum tree, worth more than one in a bush. <laughs> now let's check out the Iron Chef. See, he did choose to serve this raw. Okay, with a all. white sauce underneath it. Yeah, these are oysters with mangoes and papayas. Right, you called it raw. Yeah, and what's that, daikon? daikon these rice? are turnip slices. Okay, oh, turnip. Okay. a slice mm -hmm. right there. Looking fine. Yeah. On raw oyster, diced papaya, and mango, Kusan. scallop slices. Go, big fella. Yeah, I asked the challenger about his stew, his secret weapon to make Kondo-san vote for him, and he said, it'll be kept warm until the tasting portion of the show, and just minutes before serving, I'll add the oyster dumplings, vegetables, and finish it up with oyster broth. Going on. Wow. And more from the challenger, what you're seeing on the screen right now is a mixture of rice, oysters, egg whites, and flour that he's frying up. Hmm. Okay, now that sounds like a Japanese-style oyaki, similar to pizza, right? right? And and it should taste wonderful. Look Rice and oyster broth, ooh, Kondasan, both men's dishes are looking great. You must feel like you've died and gone to oyster oh, heaven. I'm drooling. <laughs> I know I said oysters are best raw at the beginning of the battle. <laughs> you want to take but that cooking back? them is also so good. Your views have evolved. Now, on the Iron Chef's side, some oysters in the frying pan there. Okay, and as we guessed, you did saute these. Okay. I think yes. it was Kondosan that said that, right? Mm -hmm. All right, another good call. Squeeze on. Yes. Yeah, the oysters that he's sauteing right now are the ones which were boiled in white wine, then marinated in olive oil, pepper, oyster sauce, and scallions. He coated them with weak flour and is now slowly sauteing them to seal in the flavor. Absolutely, Kondosan, you nailed it. Yeah, right on the head with that one. You're crazy about oysters, no doubt about it. We can tell that. I'm, I'm impressed here. Fukuisan. Yes. Yeah, I mentioned to the Iron Chef that he had prepared fried oysters for Junasan, but what about something for Kondosan? And he said, I think he'll like the one with the wasabi sauce. He said that he loves them raw, right? Well, this is for raw oyster lovers. Whole lot of love being spread around by the Iron Chef in the form of oysters. But you know what Junasan had in mind was not this type of fried oysters. <laughs> oh, you like the ones with the breadcrumbs around it, right? Yeah. Yeah, deeper in color, right? Mm. Okay, I thought so, yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm not disappointed. I'm not disappointed. Okay, well, here we go. Another artistic statement from Sakai. And the grilled oysters are out of the oven. Oh, okay, now I wonder if these are... Oh, okay, yeah, you can see the mouths are open a little bit. Now, what is the import of that? I think he'll just be serving them himself right at the table. Just scoop them out. As is. No yeah. sauce to go on. Well, he did use salt at the beginning, if you remember, so it right. ought to be good enough just like that. Okay, could be the best choice. Maybe a squirt of lemon, an option two with that. 
as we're winding down to the conclusion of the battle. Okay, a minute left down the stretch. The last 60 seconds, Senba, an innovator in Kyoto-style cuisine, which tends to be bound by tradition against Iron Chef French Sakai. Both men showing a high degree of ingenuity today in dealing with these delectable Asura oysters. Here's Sakai's oysters sautéed in oyster sauce down onto the plates. Can't wait to get a taste of that. Yeah. Make it quick. Yeah. The ingredients under the sautéed oysters are zucchini, green and white asparagus, eggs, olive oil, and fried bamboo shoots. Back to you. All right, vegetables, bamboo shoots, as well as the challenger's wife and his apprentices cheer him on in the final moments. He's been in command the whole way and has every reason to look as confident as he does. Sakai looks like he hasn't even broken a sweat. Both men, it appears, have accomplished exactly what they set out to do today, ordered by Chairman Kaga to create the very best oyster dishes. The final seconds are ticking down. We are at the end, and that's it. The cooking's done. The oyster battle is over. How did the hour go? Yeah, oh, very short. My uh, first time to use this kind of oyster, I learned a lot. They turned out okay. I, I think they're good. You look and sound pretty confident. Does that mean that you think you've won it? I'm gonna win. Oysters, I have some raw, sautéed, and fried ones, too. Uh -huh. That's my lineup. Mm -hmm. I added some techniques not commonly used in typical French cuisine. You know, if you win, it's your 60th win. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And with all the nicknames that you've been given, Fish Sakai, Shellfish Sakai, you know you've got to be the favorite. Win would be sweet. Challenger Senba is offering six dishes. First, oyster noodles, representing blades of grass poking up through mounds of snow left over in spring. And he made a splendid sauce for them, combining Japanese sake, fresh cream, and white soy sauce. Second, oysters and foie gras with plum sauce, an original recipe. The pink represents plum blossoms, while the green is for a bird perched on a branch, another sign of spring. Third, oysters braised in sesame and miso. The aroma of sesame seeds matches perfectly with that of the oysters, drawing out the milky flavor of these top-notch oysters. Steamed oyster and turnip, topped by an oyster broth-based sweet and sour sauce. The use of rice flour instead of egg whites results in a unique texture. Fifth is oyster ball stew. The ground oysters and vegetables are combined in perfect harmony. Red sake was added to the ground oysters, bringing a gentle sweetness to them. The soup, using a broth made from oysters cooked in shell, is a true masterpiece. This dish says it all about oysters. Last is oyster pancake. Of course, it's not sweet. The flavoring is that of a dried noodle style. The pancake is enjoyed in a citrus and soy sauce-based dip. Iron Chef Sakai has five dishes. First, grilled oysters, a simple but powerful approach with only wakame seaweed and salt. In this dish, the Iron Chef draws out the oyster's natural flavor and inherent saltiness. Second is marinated oysters in wasabi sauce. The oysters were marinated in mangoes and papayas. They're enjoyed in a sauce combining oyster broth, wasabi, and fresh cream is scrambled oysters and eggs, a success in unifying the milky flavor of oysters with the sweetness of eggs. He finished it with a rich sauce using oyster broth and fresh cream. Sautéed oysters, squid ink sauce, his answer for frying top quality oysters. First boiled, then dipped in fresh cream, coated with curry powder, and sautéed in squid ink sauce. Out of this world. Last is oyster salad. He boiled the oysters in white wine, then sautéed them in oyster sauce. Salt-cured oysters and olive oil dressing tie all the elements together. A man with his own innovative approach to the tightly wound, tradition-bound world of Kyoto-style cuisine. Today's challenger, Toshia Senba. It's Senba's call, and he calls to battle Iron Chef French Hiroyuki Sakai. Chairman Kaga unveils the theme from the bed of Hokkaido's Lake Saloma, fresh and tasty Asura oysters. In control all the way, challenger Senba finishes off a set of six dishes. Iron Chef Sakai didn't even appear to break a sweat in finding his way to five. And now, the moment of truth, tasting and judgment. On the panel today are photographer Tenmei Kano, actress Lisa Junna, singer Masahiko Kondo, and culinary critic Asako Kishi. First, the dishes of Challenger Senba. The red stands for plum blossoms, and the green stands for a bird calling in the spring. Ingredient-wise, I combined foie gras in this appetizer. Mm, this is 
so nice. I can't stop smiling. It's good. The impact of the foie gras and that of the oysters seemed to be alike, I thought. Very good. They match very well. But to me, this combination, well, I really don't agree with this combination, in my opinion. I boiled this in a broth containing sesame seed miso. For me, I think this sesame seed miso is a bit too strong. Well, I thought so, at least. <laughs> I don't think so. This miso is really fine and uh, good miso. I feel the oysters coming out of the miso and they're a bit warm and the portion is just right. I think this is quite good. I uh, made the sweet and sour sauce using broth made from oysters. The flavor of the oysters is accentuated, but people who don't like raw oysters may not go for this. I like this a lot. It's nice and light. And the sauce, although it's light in color, it carries a lot of different flavors. Very nice. You like this kind of dish? Very much. You seem to have very good taste. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> okay, thanks. And now Senba will serve his oyster ball stew. I used oysters in the shell to make the broth for this. The broth is very nice. Good use of sake and turtle broth with the oysters. It's a bit too salty, but the overall balance, including the mochi, is uh, quite good. I thought this was going to be a bit bitter, but it's quite light. Such sophisticated taste, but that <laughs> sophisticated flavor is not strong enough. It lacks impact, but again, taste-wise, very good. And now, the dishes of Iron Chef Sakai. The oysters were not too salty and very rich in flavor and body. Oh, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> it's only oysters. Natural yes, flavor. I wanted you to experience the natural flavor of these oysters. Good flavor and texture. This is a nice way to start. The flavor catches you. Very skillful, I think. <laughs> For this sauce, I used wasabi, fresh cream, and lemon juice. The combination is wonderful. It's perfect harmony. <laughs> You had turnips on top of the raw, soft oysters, and I wondered what you were doing. But this three-layer dish turned out very nice. This is a well-calculated dish. The wasabi is key. I enjoyed it a lot. This is lentil soup or bean soup with scrambled eggs and oysters. The oysters taste like oysters and were good, but it's the soup, the sauce, the soup that was so nice. It's very delicious. Mm. It's not because he used quality salt, he succeeded in using the natural saltiness. If it were added salt only, you'll get tired of this. You know what I'm saying? This has really opened my eyes. Mm. All ingredients were good, different layers of flavors. Mm. Are you crying? What's the matter? Are you okay? <laughs> Maybe it's too spicy. Oh no, it's so good. Then say so. <laughs> <laughs> the potatoes and squid ink are very good, and the fried oysters on top is good, but I wish you coated it with breadcrumbs. Yeah. <laughs> this squid ink sauce is so good. I would like to have it with a separate dish some other time. Would be nice with pasta, too. He had pasta somewhere. Oh, oh yeah? yeah? Overcooked, so I didn't serve it. <laughs> what a shame. I watched this show a lot, and the Iron Chef seemed even more fired up than usual. Am I wrong? Yeah, me too, sir. As always. <laughs> we shall see if Sakai's is fired up after the verdict when we return. Tony 
千利休の名にふさわしい作品でしたそれでは発表します Today in Kitchen Stadium rare oysters from Hokkaido literally transformed into true artistic pieces both men exploring but not betraying tradition in any way Challenger Senba presenting new ways of packaging a great theme ingredient Iron Chef Sakai masterful in his creative offerings but can he claim the pearls of victory who takes it whose cuisine reigns supreme Tetsujin Sakai Hirak it's the Iron Chef Sakai